come to worship. Right? Now, they talked to King Herod. So when King Herod heard about the newborn king, you know the background of King Herod? He killed some of his own family members who were a threat to his own power. So he panicked. He felt threatened, but he did not show it to the Magi. Instead, he told them, when you find this newborn king, please tell me where he is so I can also worship him. Of course, we know now that was a lie, right? So verse 9 says, let's read together. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that they had seen when it rose, what? Went ahead of them and it stopped over the place where the child was. So brothers and sisters in Christ, they saw the star, they followed the star. Let me just show you so that you can appreciate the trip, the journey that the Magi did. They are from they were from what we now call Iran. It was ancient Persia at that time. So basically, according to Bible scholars, they traveled 900 miles or roughly about 1450 kilometers. When I tried to track it in the Philippine map, it showed this. It's from Loneta to Davao City. Wow, 1000 500 kilometers in all. So that's how far they journeyed. No cars, no buses, no trains, no airplanes. They journeyed on a camel in a desert in the wilderness from Persia to Iran right now to Jerusalem. And then verse 10 shows us. Let's read together. When they saw the star, they were what? Can you say it aloud? Overjoyed. overjoyed. They were overjoyed. Now, if you go to other Bible translations, you will discover that it is translated something like this. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Right? That's why in NIV, the simple translation is what? Overjoyed. If you would like to put another translation, it would be like this. They rejoiced in a big, humongous, overarching joy. Something like that. If you want to stick with the word happy, they were happy about being happy that they were happy to see Him. Parang ganun. That's what it meant. Or that's, you know, exceeding joy. So why they, were they overjoyed? Imagine all these centuries, they were waiting for the one. The one who is to come that will save them from their sins. And finally, he has arrived. That's why from the depths of their soul, they were what? Overjoyed. Everybody say it aloud. Overjoyed, right? A humongous Big, overarching joy. That's what it is. Now, here's the problem today. The problem today is many Christians are underjoyed. Underjoyed, right? The Bible says we should be overjoyed. Why? But today we see a lot of Christians, they come to worship. They come to church and they look the opposite of overjoyed. They look underjoyed, right? They look like they're grumbling over something. They're whining about something. They're complaining about something. They look like they're grouching. That's the problem today, right? So I want you to think about this. It will make no sense at all if you know that you have a God of the universe who loves you so much and did something that you could not earn and could never deserve 
and still live a life, a grumbler, complainer, a grouch, a whiner? How could someone come into worship looking upset over different things, small and big things, critical or angry about everything? So I tell you today, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the spirit of Christmas, tell your face to smile. You know, tell your face to smile. Kausapin mo yung mukha mo. Sabihin mo, ngumiti ka naman. Right? Because you know what? If you know, as a Christian, how much God loves you because of Jesus Christ, then you should be the most overjoyed person on the planet. Christians, when people look at us, they should be able to say, I have never seen such a happy person in my life. That is one of the characteristics of Christians, to be overjoyed, right? To be always smiling, to be always deeply happy, regardless of the situation of your life. It doesn't matter how bad your life gets. Remember, you have the promise of eternity. You have God with you. And you have a God who was promised He is working all things for your good. Right? You have a God who is greater than any problem or burden that you could face. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and He is with you. You have no reason to carry an upset face anytime. Right? So practice this when you wake up in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror. You tell your face to smile. Right? Because we, it makes no sense for any Christian, lalo na pag can, to be underjoyed. We should always be smiling. When we worship, we should be ready to clap for God. We should be ready to praise God. We should be always ready to have fun. Tonight, we're going to treat all of the volunteers, the volunteers who have served this church, particularly for this year, 2016, and we're going to have fun. Don't be a KJ if you attend tonight. No, 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 no. Have fun if you know how much God loves you. If you know how loved you are by God. Be full of love. Be full of grace. You know, many Christians, they are known for what they stand against rather than for what they stand for. We should stand for love, for grace, for forgiveness, right? For acceptance, for tolerance of people. Until they come to know Christ's love. Remember, they traveled how many miles? How many kilometers? 1,450 kilometers. And when they finally found that Christ's child, what did they do? Verse 11, basa. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And what did they do? They bowed down. That's our topic on Christmas Eve. Continue. And worshipped him. They worship Him. Now, the next question is this. How did they worship Him? I want you to watch what happens next. Verse 11. They, what? They opened their treasures and they presented Him with what? Gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were overjoyed to finally see the Christ child. They could not wait. Can you imagine? They could not wait for Him to grow up for them to visit and worship Him. They could not wait. They had to seek Him when He was born. And when they found Him, they were overjoyed. And when they found Him, they bowed down and they brought gifts to the one who would save them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what does the Bible say? They did not give their gifts underjoyed. They gave their gifts overjoyed. They did not give their gifts upset. They were overjoyed to give. Now, regarding the gifts, it has been debated what they meant. The gold, Bible scholars say, must have represented his kingship. 
King of Kings and Lord of Lords is one of the titles given to the Savior. Frankincense, many people believe, represented his priestly role, incense. No? And then the mirror, scholars believe, represented his burial because mirror was used as an embalming agent at that time. So it represented his burial that actually the wise men knew that his birth, his coming, was for the purpose of what? Of dying on the cross. He was born to die. And so they worshipped him, overjoyed, they brought their gifts, and that was how they worshipped him. With tremendous joy in their hearts. They opened up the best that they could give, and they gave it to Jesus. So what is God telling us today? What is God telling us today? What God is telling us today is this. Bring your gifts when you worship and you give it with joy. You must love the giving part of worship. Many times, you know, we enjoy the singing, we enjoy the anthem, we enjoy the special numbers, no? we, y'all, we enjoy pastor's corny jokes and the preaching. When it comes to the giving, oh, parang naihi tayo, we go to the CR, we excuse ourselves. We're suddenly sad, right? Well, God's Word is telling us today, if you really know God and how much He loves you, and you are here to worship Him, then you must love the giving part of worship. You must look forward to giving. You must even plan. Before you come here, you have already thought how much you will give back to God. And you give it with tremendous joy, overjoyed. That's how you worship God. Now you ask the question, why? Why should we give this way? Why should we give this way? Because the answer is in your notes, because love gives. When you love someone, you give to them. That's what it is. If you really love God, then you will come to worship with a gift. Because love gives. I remember when I was in college and I used to MU several girls. I remember I would make sure they break up with me before February 12. And I will make up to them by February 15. Why? Because I was a cheapo. I didn't like to buy gifts. Because kulang naman yung allowance. So, and love gives! Diba? So, I know love gives, but don't look, some of you are looking at me with judgment. <laughs> Easy lang. You know, I know others of you did that as well. Uh, Elder Boots, oh, ay tumingin. Kuya Jun, ha? Hmm? Kuya Ben, ha? College? Wala, nahuli ka na, no? You, you know, di ba? Hmm? Ayaw pa ninyo. If you did not, you should have. Because you did not marry them anyway. Sayang lang yung pera. Sayang lang yung gana. <laughs> okay. That was my life before. That was my reasoning before. So, no, you know, uh, I'm changed now. So, no judgment. I was bad. Okay. Well, Let's go to another illustration. John 3.16. John 3.16. Famous verse. Anong isabi? Basa everybody. For God so loved the world that... There you go. Love gives. If you love somebody, you will give. That's what it is. Why did God give? Because He loved the world. What did God give? Not gold, not frankincense, not mirror. He gave His very best. His only Son. Right? That's how much He loves us. You see, the only way for us to be forgiven of our sins, the only way for us to be reconciled back to God, is if someone innocent who lived with no sin would die and shed His blood for us. That was the only way our sins could be forgiven. 
And since no one was perfect enough, no one was qualified enough, God had to come Himself in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, and rose again, so that anyone who puts their faith in Him would be saved. So brothers and sisters, love gives. That's what God does, and that's what God's people do. Because love gives. In fact, in Romans 5.8, let's read together. What does it say? God demonstrates. What does it mean to demonstrate? To show. God demonstrates His own love for us. How? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Ano ibig sabihin ng while we were still sinners? While we did not deserve it yet. While we did not deserve anything from God, Christ died for us. So, what does the Bible say? The Bible is saying, God did not shout from heaven, I love you! God did not shout from heaven. God showed how much He loved us when He died on the cross because love gives. Now, I know our topic is giving somehow. So, galing naman ni Pastor, Christmas na Christmas, nakasingit ng giving na sermon bago matapos ang taon. Hate ko pa naman to. Sana umabsent na lang ako. Well, I know some of you do not like the preaching or the teaching about giving in church. Why? Because maybe you've been going through financial pressure for some time. You are afraid. You are reluctant. You are hesitant about giving. Well, if that's your feeling about giving, especially in church, I would like to point you to one very famous verse in the Bible, often quoted, mostly posted in Facebook, and liked by thousands. And I would like to show you that people often memorize this part of the passage, but they fail to point out the context in which that passage was written. Let's go. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Famous for everybody. Everybody? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh, you heard this before. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. Acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight. Oh, diba? You know what I mean, right? It's always on Facebook. It's uh, quoted by people, liked by many. Uh, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Now, but you have to continue in order to appreciate the context. Let's go to verse 7. It says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Meaning, do not think that you are wiser no, that you are the only one wise. There's someone wiser than you, right? Do not think that your thoughts are always right. There's someone whose thoughts are higher than yours. That's what it means. Pasa, don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and shun evil. Verse 8, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Now, this is the context in which Proverbs 3, 5 was written that is not often read and memorized. Verse, let's go to the next verse. What does it say? Verse 9. Honor the Lord. Okay, let's stop there. Do you know what the word honor is in the Old Testament? It can be translated as to praise or to adore or to worship. So when, when the Bible says, honor the Lord, it actually means adore Him, praise Him, or worship Him. Right? So, I want you to read that verse and you replace the word honor with worship. Let's read it again. Everybody? Completely. Everybody? Worship the Lord. Come on. Worship the Lord with your wealth. With the first fruits of your crops. There you go. Right? Worship the Lord with your wealth. 
with the first fruits. Everybody say first fruits. Yes. I'll explain later. But then there's a promise in verse 10. What does it say? Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. So what does the Bible say? Honor means worship the Lord, your God, with your wealth and you will be blessed beyond measure. Honor Him with the what? First fruits. Now let me explain. What do we mean by first fruits? It's referred to in the book of Malachi... It's referred to by Jesus in Matthew 23, 23, when he says, you should do this. It's referred to in the book of Hebrews. It refers to what? The tithe. T-I-T-H-E, the tithe. In the Hebrew word, masar. Malachi 3.10, let's read together. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. What does a tithe mean? It simply means 10%, a tenth. Malachi says that we are to worship God with what? A tenth, a tithe. And then to trust God to bless the rest. We bring to Him the first portion of what He blesses us with. That's the tithe. And we trust Him with the remainder that He will make it more than sufficient. And Malachi says, if you do this, what? He will open up the windows of heaven. He pour out so much blessing, you have no room to contain it. So how should we worship God? Oh yes, last Sunday we learned, lift up your hands. Many of us learned for the first time how to worship God with our hands lifted up. Today we are reminded a very powerful way to worship God is by what? By bringing your tithe, by bringing your gifts. 10%? No way, pastor! Hindi mo alam ang sinasabi mo. Yung Bible na yan, mali yan! Hindi na yan applicable today. And that's when you read Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord and all your ways and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. You see? That's where you understand that passage that says, Trust in the Lord. Because true to, when someone tells you today 10%, the first 10%, crazy! How can I make ends meet today? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So it's a faith test, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a trust test for us. So we bring our first and we trust God for the rest. Not our leftovers, but our first. Right? And He promises to bless us. Right? Every time we bring the first ten of our blessings from Him, He will bless us in return. So, what does it say? Ano sabi dyan? Bring the whole tithe into the, where? Storehouse. Let me explain the storehouse. What is the storehouse? In the Old Testament storehouse, what does it mean today? Well, the storehouse, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the picture of where you get your spiritual nourishment. That's where you get spiritually fed. That's where you eat spiritual bread. That's where you gain spiritual life. Where is that place? In the church. So that's what it means. Every time you come to church, you must look forward excitedly with joy, planning ahead to give your tithe. That's your act of worship. And He promises to bless you tremendously. We return 10%. That is why ICA as a church, we are able to support four satellite churches. Because... Love gives. 
That is why we are able to give almost a thousand Bibles every year. Why? Because love gives. That is why we're able to give and deliver 500 or more Christmas shoe boxes. For the second year now, we're going to do it. Why? Because love gives. That is why we are able to offer in this place, free of charge, Celebrate Recovery Program for our community every Wednesday for the last eight, nine years. Why? Because God gave first. And we are so overjoyed that we love to give. Because love loves to give. Alright? But here's the thing. I want you to realize what's really important here in this topic of giving. Why is giving and bringing our gifts important to God when we worship Him? You know why? Because what we do with our money is an indicator of where our heart commitment lies. What we do with our money is a good indicator of what, what is in our heart. We honor God with our wealth because ultimately, when we honor Him with our wealth, we are actually giving Him our lives. That's the last point. Your ultimate gift is your life. And the giving of your wealth, the giving of your tithe, is only a mere indicator. It's a minimum indicator of what is in your heart, in your relationship to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you know of this man this man used to hate Christians. He killed Christians. He imprisoned them, beat them up, tortured them, had them killed. This man was the precursor of today's ISIL who beheads Christians. But he was transformed. And he was so transformed that later in his life, he wrote these words, Romans 12.1. Let's read together. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. What does it mean? In view of what Jesus has done on the cross. In view of what God has given to you. In view of what God has given for us. In view of God's mercy. Tuloy, I urge you, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So I want you to note, not just your wealth, not just your 10%. That's only the starting point in your giving your life to God. God wants us to give our whole lives to Him. How? Holy and pleasing to God. And then He says, let's see together, this is your true and proper worship. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then I urge you to do whatever it takes starting today to give your tithe consistently as an act of worship. And for those of you who have not really truly, fully, completely surrendered your life to Jesus, then these words I leave to you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father, we ask that in your presence today, you would just work in our hearts, Lord. So that giving would not just be something that we have to do. But it would be a true reflection of what you have done in our hearts. May your spirit move among us, Father. 
making us generous in all that we do. May we truly recognize and believe in our hearts it is more blessed to give than to receive. 